Welcome to Namely 90s, the podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. All right, you are listening to Namely 90s. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Andrew. Over there is Brandon. Um, you can find us online at Namely90s.com, and we're on Twitter at Namely90s. That's the 90s. I always feel like I should say, we've done this before, but I should say at, at namely nineties, whatever. Anyway, at a- Twitter. What? What? <laughs> so anyway, find us on Twitter. And um, also this week we are talking about September of 1992. So let's jump in here. Brandon, what do you got for us? All right. December, September. <laughs> I know what day it is. I, I might have a gas leak, by the way. Uh, oh, God. 1992. <laughs> I, I was I was making salsa yesterday, and I used the um, the broiler function on my gas stove or gas oh, oven, dear. which I hadn't used in the seven years of living here. And I, one of the I, I'm pretty sure one of the peppers exploded, which is why my house smells terrible. Uh, but <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've just been slightly concerned for about 24 hours now that I'm I'm just slightly inhaling some gas time to time well just don't light a match i guess uh, i've been lighting my lighter every three hours to make sure i don't explode that's good yeah yeah, yeah. i just want to test per- for that perfectly safe all right uh september 1992 um on the 10th lucy from the peanuts comics do you do you remember peanuts i i do yes yes I do. Uh, she raised her therapy price from five cents to 47 cents dude inflation i'm telling you i know uh, how crazy is that? Also, like, what makes her think she's a qualified therapist? Well, it used to I mean, be. How many fun- marriages she's ruined? No, she- <laughs> she's been doing it for years. It's about time she raises her prices from five cents. I mean, Doctor Phil's still on TV, so uh, is he? Oh, I, I actually don't know. Uh, on uh, the sixteenth, uh, a Nick Jonas was born. Uh, I'm not sure if he's is that in the one direction one? or uh, yes. I don't know. I he's he's one of the Jonas brothers. Now that Wilfred Brimley's died, he could be the uh, the spokesperson for those like at home testing supplies for diabetes commercials. Well, he'll he'll need a dead wife to hit. Oh my god, that's a yeah. Family Guy reference. I yeah, I know. Who the hell did I hit? That's yeah, that's a good one. One of my favorites. Uh, the ASPCA. <laughs> I, I found that interesting. On the 27th, <laughs> yes. stops a Santeria ceremony in the Bronx to stop the sacrifice of 42 animals. APCP. How do you remember that? I wrote it down. Uh. Uh, and like, did you just bust in yelling, ASPCA, freeze. No, in a number of communities, there actually are like a they're they're like a police force in a way really? like aspca animal control i mean they're they're an organization in the u.s but yeah that's uh interesting hmm. uh and then on the 30th i put this one in there for you and also because my my information always seems to to say hey the amas are this month uh garth brooks wins a cma not ama cma <laughs> uh on the 30th and strangely ezra miller um abuser and uh current dc's the flash in the the justice league universe and something for harry potter uh crimes of grindelwald whatever um yeah whatever uh, i I liked i I liked those movies the one time i saw them uh he was also born on the 30th good for him and then we're gonna move on to tv uh batman the animated series premiered on the 5th of september uh, and on the 11th, the character of Harley Quinn makes her debut in any DC media. That's she was introduced on the show before she was in the comics or movies. Uh, 
Yeah. On the 19th, Nickelodeon Guts premieres. On the 22nd, mm. we have Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, on the 23rd, we have Mad About You premiering. Oh, yeah. yeah. And on the 24th, the Sci-Fi Channel launches, and that's spelled S-C-I hyphen F-I channel. Oh, yeah. And then, Yeah, they, they did change that, didn't they? They did, and I'm sure we'll talk about that today. Uh, in the box office, uh, Blade Runner Director's Cut came out on the 11th, which is a technically a re-release, I guess. Is that supposed to be a pun? Blade Runner? Director's Cut. Because Blade, of the Blade. Runner. <laughs> it could be. You never know. Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, <laughs> comes out on the 11th as well. Uh, I don't know why. Wait, is that a nick cage movie uh it is not it's uh the one with it's i think it's a technically a horror sci-fi film oh the, what was what am i thinking of that one where like nick cage like rides a motorcycle and starts on fire ghost rider we talked about that about oh okay <laughs> sorry for some reason i got those two confused close uh <laughs> this one the guy just has a bunch of beetles sticking out of his face or oh yeah yeah face. okay i can't remember that um yeah i just thought i'd throw in the fun third movie a uh, bad sequel um captain ron came out on the 18th starring kurt russell and martin short do you remember that one um yeah my wife wanted me to watch it and i tried to watch it in like the first 10 minutes and i was like i can't do this oh good save that for later um <laughs> singles also came out on the 18th which was a cameron crow movie and it was set in seattle um it was like this was pre Titanic. God damn it, I keep hitting tab on my. Uh, wait, wait, you said a, cam- uh, a who? Cameron Crowe, the director, not uh, the director of Titanic. That's not the director of Titanic. Who's the director of Titanic? Uh, isn't it James Cameron? That sounds right. Cameron, <laughs> Cameron Crowe, the director of. Uh, Oh, I gotta on. Google it now. Almost it's, famous is, Jerry Maguire. That's what it was. This, this is good radio. Yep. Uh, oh God. Almost famous Jerry Maguire. Don't go further down that list because things get bad. <laughs> say, Got it. Say anything, which was a John Hughes film. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. James Cameron was Titanic. Okay, I feel better now. Okay. No. Elizabeth Town. Okay. Yeah. Just stop. Please stop. <laughs> Hello, Snow Buddies Four. <laughs> Actually, uh, we bought a zoo. Is on there. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, and oh, the last of the Mohicans came out on the twenty eighth, um, which I apparently always get confused with Dances with Wolves. Uh, but this is the one where Daniel Day Lewis plays a white man raised by Native Americans. Hmm. Um, yeah. And finally, on the Billboard charts, uh, for the second week of September, um, we have End of the Road by Boys to Men as number one, coming in from all the way in from August 15th, and it will last us through November 7th. So remember that next time we're on 1992. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we also have number four is November Rain by GNR. Uh, number nine is Jump Around by House of Pain. Number 13. Oh, yeah. Is Baby Got Back by Sir Mix a Lot? <laughs> Seattle <laughs> homie there. And number 20 is Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, that's yeah. a, yep, that's an abomination, pretty much. Yep. Are you talking about him? Yeah, yeah. Well, in the song, of and course. His and <laughs> yeah, that too. Actually, to be uh, fair, uh, one of her she could actually sing for one yeah she's turned her image around a bit too she's not quite as weird to be fair that album that she like went super crazy on or for uh the one with wrecking Wrecking, ball with the wrecking ball yeah yeah yeah. that i think i think that was actually a good album i can't say i listened to everything but that's when i that's when i when she was touring she actually did some like acoustic stuff on like snl and it was like oh she can actually sing. She's... My favorite thing is she's been vegan or had been vegan for a number of years. Uh-huh. And she like 
felt horrible and decided to go to more like a carnivore diet, which is definitely the other direction. And the vegans are super pissed and it's really entertaining. <laughs> Does she not feel cold anymore? No, she can actually like think now. Uh, and it's actually the diet when I was on that diet for like two weeks, which I admit is kind of lame that I was only on it for two weeks. Uh, I, I do remember to be s- vegan for no, I tried to be a meat eater only. Oh, oh. Um, what? And I did feel that's what I, my last diet was. And I actually felt like mentally much more sharp, which sounds crazy. But, you know, as I take a big rip off my Red Bull here. <laughs> uh, huh. I, anyway, pissing off vegans is always fun. I didn't realize just eating meat was a diet, I guess. Well, I mean, you do eat some vegetables here and there, but mostly cruciferous things like broccoli and whatever mm. um, and other proteins. But, yeah, it, it, it's just kind of interesting um, that they're so pissed about it. Well, I mean, vegans are, are angry about a lot of things. Hey, look at me. I'm the That's one pushing people off today. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's to be honest, ladies, um, it's hard to date vegans or vegetarians. Um, just throwing that out there. It's so damn hard to cook for when you're not one. And you can only compress soy into soy cakes so many different ways where you just like vomit. It's disgusting. Also, soy is very uh, estrogenic and gives men man boobs, just in case you were wondering. I'm going to throw away all my tofu. The now. more you know. <laughs> Please put the more you know that uh, sound in from <laughs> NBC. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that was a, that was a, a rabbit trail. Yeah. Speaking of, did you say bat trail? Um, <laughs> no, I said bat nipples. Actually, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that is true. We do talk about Batman strangely a lot. Every uh, episode. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's too many Batman things out there. It's ridiculous. But I mean, it was kind of bat fever towards the end of the '80s and in the early to mid '90s. And I think Batman the animated series really had had fueled and that fire. Like- wasn't it like Spider-Man after that, kind of in the 2000s? Uh, no. Well, Spider-Man fever, yes, but I, I think that also... The fever. Yeah, but I, I think that also preyed upon... Because ba- uh, Spider-Man, the animated series, was kind of early, mid-90s as well. Actually, it's so, on Disney+, Plus, uh, not a sponsor. The other night, there... Wait, is that the series, that animated one? That's now, is that a movie or a series? Uh, the... I. Sorry, the original, well, not the original, the 90s no, Spider-Man the Animated Series is what I was talking no, about. No, the new one, the, the Spider-Verse, new Spider-Man the animated one. cartoon movie. Yes, with Miles Morales. Is that That's, current? Yes, that came Spider-verse? out. Spider-Verse? Yeah, two years ago. I So I think the kids put it on because they were just like scrolling through Netflix or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like literally I couldn't. It was so unwatchable. I couldn't even believe it. it like, I mean, it's it's already bad. Like the whole Spider-Man franchise and the whole thing with Tobey Maguire was just a complete fail. But it, it was unwatchable. I don't know. It was like the animation style was just horrendous. I couldn't deal with it. I think you're literally the only person that has that opinion about that movie. Uh, well, that's you know what I like to have which controversial is not, opinions. Yeah, okay, w- which is not surprising to me at all, uh, <laughs> knowing you. Uh, I just couldn't out get thirty-one years. I just can't get past the animation style, and that that's, that's been fair. the case of many other things, like going Bob's from Burgers. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask for uh, Zelda, for example, to mm-hmm. that, like cell sa- cell shading garbage. What a mistake, honestly. That's just my opinion, but yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, that's the opinion I held back when they did that looking back on it it was it was well executed um but yeah no uh yeah and but then the the overcorrect to twilight princess to make it super dark and gritty yeah too much yeah uh let's turn you into a wolf um but yeah uh speaking of animation styles no i i feel like we should circle back to the spider-man and <laughs> animated thing did the kids like it at least oh yeah i mean the kids like it. it's got bright colors and stuff moving around and, yeah. and all sorts of stuff they were I, scared for some of it but, i'll be i'll be know. the first I'll, I'll be the first to freely admit that i felt like i was having an epileptic seizure during the uh, final battle um where it's just all swirling chaos and color but I don't know how to describe the animation style. Bad. It was just like choppy and, and I can't fo- like my eye can't follow it. I, th- I think that's my biggest complaint. Like It didn't look bad. It's just 
it doesn't feel like a. it makes it feel like it's not cohesive to me i don't know it, it they, did, they did go for that i think with like let's make it slightly more like a comic book than it sh- than it is um, yeah i think you're right i think you're right yeah and as a person who doesn't read i'm sorry did you say comic books yes. graphic novels those are different things. um <laughs> whatever anyway um I just remember, I just think about the guy from uh, The Simpsons. How about no? <laughs> the uh, comic book. Comic that book guy? I yeah, think you mean graphic guy. novel guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, worst review ever. <laughs> um, I can't do his voice, though. You actually had a no, like, good... He just had like a, a dignified British guy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in a way. <laughs> uh, speaking of dignified British... No, wait. That's, that transition doesn't work either. Alfred. Well, okay, so I, I wanted to talk about Batman the Animated Series a little bit just because um, I think that was my my real first introduction to Batman. Mm. I, I know we had Batman 1 and 2 on VHS because I, I remember those vividly being under our television console thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Batman the Animated Series, uh, the voice of Batman was Kevin Conroy. The voice of the Joker was Mark Hamill, best known as Luke Skywalker. Oh, interesting. Did not know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so those are like the iconic Batman and Joker voices for me. Um, and they also came back for the Arkham uh, series, uh, video game series that started like 10, 15 years ago. Um, where they voiced the same characters again, except in the origin prequels. Um, I just, yeah, I just need to say those are the definitive Batman voices, Batman and Joker voices. Okay. Um, because that's what I grew up on. Um, and, you know, uh, it also, it introduced Harley Quinn, um, who is now played by, like, Margot Robbie in the movies. Yeah, like four years ago, everyone was naming their dog that, by the way, just in case anyone was wondering. Uh, that's true veterinary insight right there. Yeah, jeez. Um, and then seriously, and like every dog in um, in like the two thousand late two thousands was named Bella and Esme. Oh, it was like, oh, this is painful. I mean, it's just it's bad. Twilight's having a resurgence right now too. I think she just released the first book from the view of edward the stalker 100 year old of a 19 16 year old girl was there a lot of sparkling in it oh yeah great so now he's like stalking an underage girl (laughs) okay nice wasn't she though nice work right she was in high school Um, i suppose i mean he's lived at least 100 years i mean this is the buffy angel buffy spike argument i guess but um, oh, I'm just looking at this, the Spider-Man thing. 93% of Google users like this movie. <laughs> well, I must be in the 7% that's right. <laughs> wow, that's a stance there. Uh, so Batman, the animated series, also led to the DC animated universe or DCAU, uh, which included the new Batman adventures, Batman Beyond, the new adventures of Superman, and eventually Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and that whole franchise. Did you ever see Batman Bed Bath and Beyond? <laughs> no, I, I mostly just enjoy the Beyond portion. All right. Uh, uh, and you know this like this was a award winning animated series. By the way, um, it got a pri- it won a primetime Emmy for outstanding animated program in 1993 for the episode Robin's Reckoning Part One. Uh, mm. And also won three other daytime Emmy, Emmys, one for Outstanding Writing in 93, Outstanding Music Direction and Composition in 96, and also Outstanding Sound Editing in 96. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, it's uh, Some people don't realize that. It, it was a cartoon, but like it was, it, it was good. It wasn't just like whatever your children watch today. Yeah, which is mostly crap. I mean, Ace like I said, like I always case. say, Paw Patrol is watchable. Um, is it? They, they're watching more. Um, oh, Blaze and the Monster Machines, which is like this monster truck that drives around and teaches them things about like torque and other physics and, yeah, and other cool. like counting and stuff. So that's kind of fun. No, um, Paw Patrol. It, to be honest, I learned a few Paw things. Um, I could probably learn a lot. Uh, what's no Peppa Pig? 
No. Oh, no. No. So horrible. Uh, but while we're on the Batman topic, since we do talk about Batman a lot, uh, I wanted to talk about Rob Bat, Bat and Bat. I have no idea. First of all, did, was that English? And second of all, what are you talking about? Since we did, we did just reference Twilight. We might as well talk about Robert Pattinson becoming uh, the new Batman. Wait, but what is the thing that you just said? I said Rob Bat Batten Bat. <laughs> that that this is this is going to be his official designation as uh as the Batman. Um we had we had Batfleck. Um and uh oh, yeah, man. so uh, obviously I didn't come up with that originally. That's from a different podcast called The Weekly Planet. Um but uh we're we it's slowly taking over. Rob Bat Bat and Bat. Everyone got that? I, I the I would say I mean yeah I mean, this is gonna be controversial but like is Batman not the the world's like the best example of a dead horse and we just keep beating it I don't know what's what that horse did to somebody but it's it's been beaten thoroughly uh yeah um but it looks so they oh, I guess you've been you have been quite busy the last two weeks uh there was this thing called DC Fandom last week I believe last weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they had like an online convention for all the DC movies that were coming up, and including Zack Snyder's Justice League director's cut. You guys, ugh. Um, but they also <laughs> they showed the the trailer. They showed the trailer for um, Robert Pattinson's Batman, which is going to be like he's in his second year of crime fighting, which is something that hasn't been done in film yet, and they. Um, they're focusing on the world's greatest detective aspect of Batman for once, and mm. the trailer actually looked really good. I was going to send it to you, so you saw it before we did this, so um, right, we would have something to talk about when I said the word. Well, I see why they're doing. I see Rob why they're still Bat, doing Bat it. It's because Bat. there's a crowd has gathered around the dead horse and they're watching them beating the dead horse and they're cheering. So that's why they still make Batman movies. Uh, And also apparently Ben Affleck is who has retired from the role is still coming back to, to do Batman stuff in the flash. And for the record, we're not talking about real horses. Don't Don't call the ASPCA, please. Although Uh, I don't know. Batman is a bat and a bat is, is an animal. And also, they announced original Batman movie Batman, not Adam West, but um, the, the 1989 Batman. Um, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> original tonight. Recipe Batman as opposed to uh, Spicy Batman or Extra Crispy Batman. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I'm just made a KFC joke. Yes, two, two, or uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mom. Do you remember who's... No, what, Mr. Mom, uh, the actor, the Wh- which Batman are we trying to figure out? 1989. Michael Keaton. Oh, been... Wow. No, oh yes. Who, interestingly enough, in the movie, the other guys worked at a Bed Bath and Beyond. Uh, and <laughs> just tying it in. Just tying it in. Just, uh, it's all surprisingly. <laughs> coming together here <laughs> it's um, a bunch of bizarre nonsense but somehow it does seem to relate i don't know speaking of bizarre nonsense i thought we should talk about the sci-fi channel yeah so first of all why did they go to the scyfy thing what, what was the story there do you know about that you mean syfy oh did they do that oh yeah i'm sorry syfy yeah. Rebranding? Uh, uh, yes. I recall the rebranding is because you can't um, trademark uh, a word. The word. Yeah. A common word. So. So then. My question to you would be what type of programming was on there before that you liked and what does it consist of now? Uh, I actually have that prepared. So. um the great series on the sci-fi channel included Farscape, um, which was put on by the Jen Henson um, Muppet uh, Puppet Muppet Company. I don't know, but the, it was like so. It was, right. it was sci-fi live action with uh, like actual puppetry stuff, like Yoda. You know, he, they looked right. real instead of like crappy CGI. 
Uh, they adopted Star- Stargate SG-1 from right. uh, Showtime, which also spun off twice. Um, and then I also enjoyed Eureka. Um, oh, I remember that show. Yep, yep. Yeah. I did see that one, a bit of that. And the, there were a couple of mini, mini series on there that were pretty good, too, I remember watching. Yes. Um, I, I don't remember exactly which one it Tin was, Man, but there, there were some Starring ones. Zoe Deschanel as no. Dorothy. <laughs> no. I, yeah, no. <laughs> uh and then um also their first broadcast was like the first thing that they aired was star wars episode four i also think they had x-files in syndication for a while didn't they yeah they also did like twilight zone marathons on uh on christmas ish and they also did um i think they had like the original series of star trek on at like two in the morning um they also eventually made such great movies as Sharknado. I I mean, I pretty much, if I see that channel, I just fly right past it I anymore. I absolutely agree. I haven't watched it since Eureka went off the air, which was eight to ten years ago. That was really their Eureka moment when they put that show on the air. Dead silence. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just so funny. It killed me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had a cardiac arrhythmia for from the funniness of that joke, not the horrible nature of it where it was the worst joke ever made. Uh, but yeah, how dumb was sci-fi? S-Y-F-Y. Very. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then... I thought we could end by talking some movies that came out. All right, let's do it. So I thought I'd try to describe movies I've not watched in over five years and sometimes from childhood, starting with Captain Ron. Yeah, so I I just remember the the beginning of it was just sort of a cluster and it looked horrible. So I think we just put on a different movie. Well, so it's Martin Short. Uh, and he's trying to take his family on some sort of boating vacation. Right. And he hires, I'm pretty sure, just a, some s- someone to captain his boat, which is Captain Ron, played by Kurt Russell. All right. Right. He, I want to say. And, uh, and then they get in misadventures. Uh, I'm pretty sure the family get kidnapped by pirates and then they have to somehow rescue them by working together he, in an odd couple situation he is still alive but i feel like he's dying kurt uh, who died patrick, no i'm saying kurt patrick Swayze. yeah yeah yep uh sorry kurt russell um yeah he's back from the dead my god um yeah so you watched a part of it and then just stopped yeah, I, I don't recall what part it was, but I was told by my wife I had to watch it. And I was like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> and that was the end of it. Did, so she did she also be like, hmm, this isn't as good as re- I remember. Or did she just give in to your like, no, we just, I, I think I, I don't recall, actually, but I, I know we just didn't watch it. OK. Uh, Blade Ooh. Runner. Uh, this one is probably the most recent one that I've seen. Uh, it is one of the best pieces of sci-fi film of all time. You said 80s cinema in, the, in another uh, episode. Fair enough. Uh, I, I, will, I will give it that and because I already did. Um, basically, it stars Harrison Ford as a Blade Runner, which is... A, um, a police officer who slash bounty hunter who kills uh, runaway androids essentially um, called replicants yeah. and uh, yeah and he's hunting down five of them that escaped from a work colony on the moon. You know when you say cinema that is that that paints a picture of like some like boutique independent French film you know uh, that has to be all translated. That sounds like a movie you know. <laughs> Uh, I know there's no difference. Yeah. Um, It just has more pretension to it. Um, Yeah, it does. And actually with how have you seen, I don't know if it's how you are right now, but uh, California, the skies are orange. Um, 
You know, it, interestingly, there's a fire like next door and <laughs> the air quality is decent. It's just being blown toward the rest of you suckers. Ah, fun. Yeah. But so there's like video of like a drone just taking shots in San Francisco put onto the Blade Runner soundtrack right now because that's <laughs> that was the dystopian future that they painted in in Blade Runner um, with the weird, right. weird, weird color and overrun smog. And this is I think it was set in 2016. <laughs> Flying right. cars. You know, I think it's interesting that the, um, you know, it's turning into this whole thing. Once again, it's becoming political where it's like climate change. And, and yeah, there's probably some element to that. But I remember I was in my environmental science class uh, in college, actually Western Washington University had a pretty reputable um, environmental sciences program. And basically there was like some fire dude that came in and was like, Honestly, like five times more of our forests should be burning, but we spend so much time protecting them from burning that they don't. And it's actually part of the natural life cycle and all that. And and but we protect structures and, and obviously human lives. So that's why our entire country is basically like an incendiary bomb waiting to go off. Just saying. Fun. I'm just adding some of the science to it, you know, <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Uh, no, that's uh, we are a very well informed podcast. Um, yes, we are. Next up is singles, I guess, which all I remember is that it was set at this apartment complex in Seattle and Eddie Vedder was in it. And I think a bunch, which of- is why no one's ever heard of it, because nothing Seattle is ever really like that popular. Right. I mean, there was that really good movie with uh, Seth Rogen and not Seth Rogen. Yeah. Seth Rogen and um, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, where he had cancer called 50 50. That was set in Seattle. I, I have a, a poster that was in the movie on my wall. Um, but yeah, because yeah. Um, I don't need to tell you that plot because that didn't come out in the 90s um, but go watch it 50-50 and then uh, yeah Last of the Mohicans um, I honestly again thought it was Dances with Wolves uh, so I'm just going to describe <laughs> Kevin Costner is uh, on the plains and uh, falls in love with a Native American woman and then they go up into the mountains to have a baby the wait end. or Daniel Day-Lewis uh no i'm confused i again oh you were mixing them up i was describing then i was describing (laughs) uh dances with wolves and then he turned into abraham lincoln oh god was he somehow wow yeah daniel day lewis played lincoln he's Uh, british isn't he sure okay and that kind of (laughs) rounds out the podcast (laughs) is there any other things you want to you want to throw in no no i think uh i think that would be it that would be september of 1990 was it two yes two two three, two. three is okay. next week uh so uh-huh. i guess that's it for this week's edition of namely 90s um you could find us on twitter at namely 90s with a nine zero s or find our personal accounts at be Schwitty and at namely andrew and tell us what you want us to talk about on future episodes you can also contact us through our website, namely90s.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Nightwing, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts at. Please leave us a review if you can, uh, specifically on Apple Podcasts, because that will help us, you know. Yes, I was going to mention, you said iTunes last time, but that thing is going by the wayside. It's now Apple Podcasts. Yes. Uh is I mean, is that actually? Yeah, cool? actually, iTunes is uh, phasing out, supposedly. Oh, well, subscribe to us on Whoops. Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Nightwing, Deezer, TuneIn, or iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts at. Uh, like I said, I'm Brandon, that's Andrew, and we will catch you next time.